want to go. I'm sorry, that's because I'll be live.
Right, so that's the, um, that's that for the work, for the action part of what we're doing. And we're going to take, uh, we're going to take questions now. So like I said before, it's about your work and your creative process. And if you want to experiment with that, you can ask me a question about my work and I'll make it about you. But I'm still laughing on this night. I remember before, when we first started doing this, well, it was a long time ago. I had to shout. That wasn't so good. But anyway, so does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Did you get a haircut? I did. Yeah. I'm not so candid, to be honest. Oh, it's very... Uh, I totally leave it long in the back, but you have a different idea. <laughs> I don't want to talk <laughs> Okay, sorry. That's not your work. That's your haircut. No. It's her work. Uh -huh. We won't talk about her work. Anybody else? Anybody have a question? An answer? A theory? A plug? Anybody want to plug their show? No? Yeah. I have one tweeted question. Cool. What's the tweeted question? Kimmy D. Tweeted at you. Say. Okay, good. Okay, good. Nice. I gotta go. Uh, Kimmy D tweeted asking, I'm stuck with my play, probably need it to be read by a dramaturg. Suggestions? Kimmy D. Kimmy D. So, um, well, so I'm stuck with my play, Kimmy says, I'm stuck with my play, it probably needs to be read by a dramaturg. Suggestions? A oh, question mark. Well, if you, I mean, the things that you've got in your, in your posse or your tribe, if you've got a lot of dramaturgs in your tribe, can you see, you know, and you like one of them particularly well, and she or he, the dramaturg, loves you more than they love seeing their ideas in your play, then sure, I say, sure, give it to one of your friends, one of your friends who adores you and wants to see you succeed. That's what I suggest. But if you think, you know, if you don't have a lot of dramaturgs in your crew or your posse or your, your tribe, and you think you should just kind of approach a dramaturg who you maybe really respect but don't really know very well, then I'd say pause. Because this is what I and my, my wonderful people at NYU reminded me of this earlier today. This is what I tell them, that you know more about your play than anybody. Believe it. Believe it. You know more about your play than anybody. You know more about your play than I do. Or anybody. Anybody, any smart person can give you notice. But you have the answers within you. You just have to listen for them. What a smart dramaturg or colleague or friend can do is they can ask you lots of questions to get you thinking and talking and maybe rewriting and writing more about your play. So, if you have a friend who's a writer, that might be a good place to start. They don't have to be a certified dramaturg, although certified dramaturgs are awesome. But they don't have to be a certified dramaturg. They can be just a friend who is, you know, who wants to read your work, and maybe a group of actors might want to read your work aloud. And you can then hear where the holes, the potholes might be. Um, there are lots of routes. There are lots of ways to go. Maybe you could tweet us again and give us a little more um, information. But that's, that's a really good question. Um, I, yeah, I, I would say if you have friends who are dramaturgs, then that's a great way to go. But if you don't, then maybe just a good friend who's smart and who loves you. Very important. But thanks for tweeting. Yes, Jesper. That I do whenever I'm stuck. Yeah. Uh, uh, I generally go and see a piece of theater, uh, and if it's really good, then it's inspiring and it makes me want to write because I want to be just like that. Or if it's really bad, then I think that was really bad. I could write something better than that, and this got put on stage. There you go. Yeah. So right. So Jasper goes to see play other people's plays, and if they're really good, then it inspired Jasper. To continue. And if they're not so good, Jasper's like, yo, I can cut that in a minute. Uh, right there with so, yeah. right. Oh, yeah, that works too. That actually works. That works too. So that's, but that's, yeah, so that's, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or you can also, if you're, you know, short of time or short of money, you can read some plays. And maybe you get inspired by some plays you read, um, go to the library, you know, that's free. Or you could even, um, we could, uh, that's, uh, yeah, reading plays is, is, is a good idea too. It's a free way to get inspired. Or you might read a play you don't like so much, so you like it be better than that. So we can have the same experience for, for free. Those boundaries might kind of fall away, 
a little earlier than you'd like them to. So I'd say start surrounding yourself if you haven't already. You maybe have with people, again, who care about you more than they care about seeing their ideas in your work. You have people like that around you. Yeah. Did you go to a, one of those programs, schools, or? No, no, neither did I, so it's, it's, it's not necessary. I'm just asking because, well, but do you have a, a writing group or a club, anything? Do you? Still, there there are people who care about you and want to see you succeed, right? So, you, so you, right. So you might you might uh, bring them into the process of just talking about your play. You see, you see what I mean? Because before you go out and get producers, you want to at least know, oh, what have I got here? I mean, do you, are you pretty sure I got this and it's all written? Is it all written? Like money producers, like what, what is it? Yeah. Well, the goal is yeah. to bring it to New York and to right. get it on the Broadway. Right. 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 right, right, right. Now it's taking it, taking that step towards finding, you know, I don't want to produce it anymore. Sure, sure. sure. Yes. Well, you've done enough. You've done, you've done it three times and you're on work. What about the people in that, your fellow at a, in a program? What about those people to see what connections they might have? Because they know you as a writer. You see what I mean? And they would have sort of avenues like, hey, why don't you try this for this person? And they can, you can lean on their relationships to get to know more people. You see, that's what you, it's all about relationships. Really, it, it really is. So you don't just want to go in cold and just start handing your script. I mean, you could do that. Um, but do you, do you understand? So you're in a group right now of writers and people who have given you a fellowship. Say, hey, I've got this musical. I put it up three times and I'm interested in taking it to Broadway and whatever your dreams are for it, how would you suggest going about it? Because they know your work. You see, they, do you understand what I'm saying? So lean on the relationship to Yeah, and then sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I didn't think about those people, because they're only interested in this part of me. And actually, those are exactly the people you should at least talk to, to start out with. And they might say, wow, why don't you talk, talk to the folks at ART in Boston? or the Huntington in Boston, and they, and they probably know those people, right? So they could probably put you in contact with the folks at ART, or the Huntington, or any of the other wonderful theaters in Boston, right? Does that make sense? Where's it come down? In Boston? Yes. How are you doing the music and the lyrics for the book, or all of it? I'm open to like some book help, um, but I'm very much attached to composing and doing the words. You want to go to 
go to everybody's plays, whether they're produced within the group or outside of the group. We want to give people smart, caring feedback and not to worry about whether or not you see their notes in your work again, same thing. Um, you want to be there for each other. You want to be honest. No backstabbing. It's going to be hard. Um, you want to encourage each other. You know? Um, you know this one. No, you know this. I know this. What's the name? I want to know the name of your theater company. Well, that's what I want to know. What did they say? What did they say? Well, tell us the name. How exciting. Congratulations.
Yeah, Carol says dramatists throw newsletter. That's a great. That's the that's the that's the resource book that that, is, that comes out. Okay, that's the the, the CCG covers. Anyway, drama skill. Oh, uh, drama source book. That's what it's called. Yeah. The drama source book. That's what it's called. Thank you. Yeah. But also the newsletters. And the newsletters, yeah. Are they on? They're online. The online newsletter. The drama skill. Yeah, that's good. And I, and yeah, like you said already, I mean, you've already written the play. So what's great about what you've done already is you're not waiting around for someone to give you the fellowship so that you can write the play. You went ahead and wrote it. Good for you. And that's going to put you in really good standing. You know, you just, you're self-motivated, and that's what we need to do uh, as artists. We need to really be able to, you know. I think if you've got a posse, again, if you've got some of your screenwriting folks, or if you know some actors who can read it, uh, give it a reading, and, you know, to get some life other than your life <clears throat> around it, I think it's good. But I don't think you have to produce it or self-produce it. If you are part of a theater collective that does that kind of thing, great, you know? But I wouldn't do, like, one or the other. I wouldn't think, first, I have to do all this stuff, and then I can apply for a grant, you know? Because you could just, in your artist statement, say this is a play about whatever, 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 and then someone on the committee can read it and go, yeah, let's give her a grant, you know? So it, it totally often works like that. Thanks for asking. Thank you. There's a function over there that I need to go where I should be. I should some blah, blah, blah. Lord, it's Lord Help on this uh, party. But I wanted to do this before I did that. Yes? Um, any advice for someone uh, looking to break into directing professionally? I've directed some things I've produced in myself in the past. Right. Um, not, in, not in New York. I'd love to know, like, with any advice. I mean, I feel like there's lots of, you know, actors audition, uh, writers submit, perhaps as a director break. Right, break. right, right. As far as I know, they know, uh, it's like you're hanging around with people. It's like um, a band, right? Like, I have yeah. three bands. I mean, three bands. So how did that happen? I mean, three bands. How did that happen? Well, I just was, I hang out with a lot of people who play. You know what I mean? So. A director would hang out with a lot of people who play. So maybe there's a playwriting group that does um, plays, and you get to know the playwrights, you know? You go to new play readings, which are all over town, most of them free, you know? Um, you get to know new, uh, you know, up and coming, uh, emerging writers. You get to know those folks. And you start talking to them, and they say, well, I'm having a reading. I'm gonna do a reading in my play for some, you know? You want to direct it? Okay, great. And it's small. It's, and when you said professionally, you know, for a while, I'm like, oh, I'm not be getting paid hardly anything or maybe nothing. But you're going to hang out with people who play. And then we'll come to the moment when you go, oh, yeah, we got to work together and we have this opportunity. Or you get invited to direct something for a class at NYU and you get to know more people that way. And it's just kind of, I think it's the same way. I'm not a director, but I think it's the same way as find people to play in a band with. You just hang out with people who play. And that's, you know, that's just, and, and not necessarily on a, a high level, like, you know, going to see ghosts at BAM or whatever, it doesn't kind of count in the same kind of way. Like if I went to hear like Eric Chapman, that wouldn't count, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about people hanging out with people that I would play music with, you know? And, and it's fun, you need to have fun along the way. I mean, hopefully you do, you would. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, 
Well, I, you know, uh, right, right, right. The most important thing in breaking it is about relationships. Yeah, that's an important thing to serve a program, like a graduate school or undergraduate program, can give you relationships. Part of the you know? um, but I, I am of the mind that it's both. It's relationships and it's having the work, having done the work. Because you know those people at the cocktail parties, they're hanging around and they can smooth really, really well. They got a lot of great relationships and they seem to get invited to direct all kinds of plays. But when the moment comes for them to do the work, they're not so good. But when the moment comes for them to turn in their script, they're not so good. When the moment comes for them to be on stage and be that character, and they're better at schmoozing. So you gotta, I think you gotta, I think you gotta be good at, you know, at both. And I would, I would suggest err on the side of the work. You know what I mean? Make sure your work is solid, and, and, and then spend time schmoozing. Don't go out schmoozing every night, I would suggest. But, yeah, good question. to sort of meet people in theater and forge sort of new relationships and stuff. Uh, if, you're, if you're willing to, one of the things that works really well for me is I volunteer usher at theaters, and it's, it's great because, first of all, you get to see the play for free, which is great. There's like a hundred theaters in New York that do that. And also, just because you're in the theater doing a job, you sort of end up meeting people. Like, you'll just end up talking to the director of the play that you just saw, or the house manager, or any of the staff, a lot of whom are also writers and directors and stuff trying to break into the business and stuff. So, yeah, you sort of, you go and you sort of stand for an hour before the show and end up programs and talk to the back and on, and they ask you how long it is, and then you watch the show for free, and then you can talk to people afterwards. And you meet lots of new and friendly people that way who are all working in New York. That's true. But I would just suggest, in, in addition to that, which is a great idea, which is a great idea, do the other more, I guess, active, sort of, because that's a great way to also see plays. But do the more active, I'm going to a new play reading, I'm going to sit in the audience as an audience person. And I'm going to get to know this group of playwrights. Like a couple of years ago, there was this great group of playwrights, 13P, and they were just awesome. And you know, you get you just get you start hanging out with them, and suddenly it's going to be like, oh yeah, we all know each other. Hey, why not be like, you know, like that. So that both are both, both ideas are good. But I want to keep it more active, you know, because I'm not sure it's easy to just. Um, yeah, because I'm finishing up a grad program, a lot of us are in that position of like, we yeah. want to make our 13P, that literal thing. Right. And it feels like 13P was this like unicorn, this group of people who all complemented each other so perfectly in some way that they made a functional company that could produce things while creatively supporting each other. And that seems really hard to me. Do, you, do Am I overthinking it? Like. You could make a 13, I mean, they're not 13 people in the class that you have right now, but you could make a collect a great collective out of the writers in your, your class that I know, those people. They'd make a great collective supporting each other. Yeah, um, yeah, but there was that, like, thing that put them to the next level of being able to, like, make the rubber hit the road and put on, like, extend beyond the writers to bring in yes, directors to bring in producers. Producers, literally. Yeah, they had producers. How do you find those? How do you find them? There are people. Anyone else who have a producing program? Stern does. Business school. Producing theater program? Sort of. Sort of? Yeah, it has a program. Don't they? Don't they have a producing theater program? Find the people in the program. That's a good way to do it. Contact somebody um, in a producing office. So this theater right here, I have to give you the name of somebody. You have to go and say, hey, who are your young producers, people who want to work with emerging writers? If you're not an emerging writer, you know what I'm saying. You know, who might want to form something that echoes or that follows in the footsteps of a 13 Who are those people who want to do that? 
because producers, big producers are, are gold. And you just want to find them. And they're out there, they're out there looking for things to get excited about. Also, places like Arts Nova has a whole bunch of, you know, they have festivals and the people who do the, why are you smiling? They'll just, help your eyes be Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, well, you know, you know, you know, they love to work with you. They would love to work with you. So you get your writers and you get your producers and then you start finding directors. Well, there's one right there. You know what I'm saying? You know? And you start forming your collective that way. It only looks like totally special and perfect because you're looking at it from a distance and wow, uh, there they were. You know what I mean? But they just were. You know, they just got together and started. You guys can do this on No problem. Thank you. 